Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. Today you are just seeing a picture of me and not the video. So don't get disturbed by that. I'm traveling and yet I thought while I'm traveling, why not record a tutorial for the community? And that is what we do each Thursday. We come out with a tutorial and we have been doing this for last many months. And thankfully the schedule has been really up and running. So today we are going to talk about CPU utilization history. Now this demonstration is slightly different than a lot of CPU troubleshooting we do quite often. Troubleshooting CPU performance and tuning the scheduler stuff in SQL Server. There are a lot of DMVs at your disposal if you want to do that. For example, on a real time basis, if you want to track down what's going on inside SQL Server, how much CPU is being consumed by each query, each workload, you have sysdm exec requests and the CPU time attribute to play around with that. Real time troubleshooting can be done using perfmon counters. You have the task manager, you have these DMVs that I talked about and things are not that difficult. And of course, history about each query is also available from sysdm exec query stats. A lot of query metrics are available. Today's demonstration, today's tutorial is about tracking the CPU utilization history, which means after the workload has come and gone away, how do you identify that high CPU usage was caused by SQL Server workloads or was it caused by any other process that was running on the box on the server? So we're talking about two things here. Whenever you see high CPU usage, either you are investigating inside SQL Server, but you also need to keep an eye on outside SQL Server. All the tasks or processes or other server applications that are running on the box, on Windows, on that server where SQL Server is installed. So the first indicator really here is to just go back into the history and look at the timestamp. When high CPU usage occurred, was it due to workloads inside SQL Server or was it an event that was outside the purview of SQL Server? And that one DMV comes to my mind, which is sysdm OS ring buffers, which has one record each for an event and it also records the timestamp. And from there, we can extract a lot of information, do some arithmetic and find out what was going on. So what I have done is written a script and I have encapsulated that script in this stored procedure called CPU utilization history. If you look at CPU utilization history here, what we get is the event time. Now, if you look at the event time here, uh, the last one that can be seen as 9.15. Now, as of this recording, today's date and today's time, if you look at the taskbar for me right now, the clock says 9.36, okay? And, and we, are going to, we are going to stress SQL Server and do some activity. So 9.15 here, you will see SQL Server CPU utilization is all zeros, which means there were no workloads really running inside SQL Server. And then look at this last attribute, which says other process CPU utilization, which is like 22, 13, so on and so forth. So what I have done is in this script, we can really sort on different attributes. You can sort on event time, you can sort on uh, SQL CPU utilization, or you could sort on other processes CPU utilization. Currently in the stored procedure here, I'm sorting on other processes CPU utilization. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to create some CPU intensive activity on the server, on Windows, not inside SQL Server. And then we'll run it for a few seconds and then we'll come back and run this stored procedure again. Now remember, the important thing here is not tracking things real time. We are trying to go back into the history. That is why I named this stored procedure as history. We are going back into the history and trying to look into the ring buffer data as to what really happened a few minutes back. All right, let's do that. So first, what we will do is right click, go to task manager, jump over to the performance tab. And right now you can see that CPU utilization is very minimal. We can see utilization sitting at 2%, 1%, all, all good there. Now, 
Let's create some activity. The easiest thing that comes to my mind is if I can just go to C drive, I have opened up uh, file explorer. I'll go to C drive and we'll just try to search something, right? Searching on a keyword will create some activity. So let's do one more. There's one search going on. Let's create one more and I will jump over to see here again. And let's say, let's try something like Amit. Okay, let's do this and let's see what's there up in the task manager so now you can see that task manager cpu utilization here is going up now this is because of the activity that we are doing on windows it has nothing to do with sql server this is what we are seeing high cpu utilization okay i've opened up another one let's let's do one more search activity Okay, there you go. Let's see, things are getting a bit slower there because recording is also going on. So I'm going to type, let's say SQL maestros and then enter. Let's go back to the task manager and see that CPU utilization is, uh, is increasing even further. Now you, we are kind of touching 60%, so it's going up. So there's a lot of CPU activity being created now. So about 50% on an average, that's what you are seeing now. Now this is all because of processes running on Windows. Now, as a SQL Server DBA developer or someone who is monitoring production or you are the reliability engineer or whatever your role is, you are going to see similar CPU, high CPU utilization on your box. And the first thing that you are doing is investigating if this high CPU utilization is caused by SQL Server or is it caused by other tasks and processes running on Windows? Isn't it? This is what we really do. And uh, I have already shown that to you. This is not because of SQL Server. This is something that is happening on Windows. You are doing this real time. You're tracking this real time. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of different tools and techniques and DMVs to do things real time. But what happens after the workloads have receded, after all these processes are complete, then can you go back into the history and try to figure out a few things? So let's just go and close this. Okay, let's go and close this one as well. Okay, let's go and close this as well. Okay, I'm going to close this also. Now I have closed down all the search processes now you can see that CPU utilization has come down and it's back to normal what we were seeing earlier, right? So now you can see utilization is 2%. Okay, so in summary, what has happened is everything was all good and uh, happy. And then suddenly a few processes and tasks came in and, C and CPU utilization went really high. This had nothing to do with SQL Server. It was all kind of activities on the server on Windows. Friends, it could be anything. It could be your IIS web server or any other application, server application running, a reporting application running, any other data-driven application running. It could just be an antivirus, any malware scanning going on or anything like that, okay? Now, everything is quite and normal. Now, let's see this stored procedure in action. So we can just close this down. What we want to do is check on CPU utilization. We're going back in time. Let's go and execute this and see what results we get. So what you can see is first look at the timestamp 940, 939. These are the two important events. If you look at the time here on the taskbar, right? This is what we were doing at about 939, 940. These events occurred and SQL Server CPU utilization at this time was zero. You know that we didn't run any SQL Server workload. But now what you can see here is other processes CPU utilization, 45, 35, right? These are the two important events that you got to watch out for. Before I ran, uh, before I created all those activities on Windows, this was our last event, 915. So you got to focus on these two, what you see on the screen here, right? Now, this gives you the correct indication that during these two timestamps, which was about 940, 939, it was not really SQL Server that was causing high CPU usage. It was something on the Windows operating system. SQL Server CPU utilization was just very 
quiescent, nothing at all. It was all on Windows. That's the kind of evidence you get from the ring buffer data. Now from this point onward, uh, onwards comes your further investigation as to what was going on on the OS. And that probably is not in your purview. This is something to be done by server administrators. You know, people who are taking care of the boxes, of the servers, the network, etc. It's not in the purview of SQL Server. However, if you had seen SQL Server high CPU utilization here, then of course you would go and investigate your query statistics, procedure statistics, and all the metrics that you are recording uh, with your baselining tool or your native tools. That is you know, a different story and a different video and a different tutorial altogether. But I hope you get the idea, the message as to what really are you trying to do. You are going back into the history and looking into who was eating up all the CPU cycles during these times in the history. All right, friends. Now, something that is coming to your mind is what is the script behind this stored procedure? Okay, that video and that tutorial and whatever script I am running is available in our members section. So if you are watching this on YouTube, jump over to the, the members only list and I have a more detailed version of this video where I talk about the script and, you know, and all the arithmetic we are doing with the script to get this kind of output. And it's also available on sqlmaestros.com where you can take a premium membership. You can even download the script, the entire stored procedure and the SQL code behind this. And I give you a detailed explanation as part of the premium video uh, to show you what mathematics dissecting we are doing in this script. So either SQL Maestro's premium membership or you can become a YouTube member. Either way, you will have access to that content. All right, friends, uh, just a quick peek as to what we really do here is we are playing with sysdmos ring buffers and we try to extract each record with timestamp. This is the kind of XML that we get. And just to give you the hint, we are playing, playing with process utilization here, system idle, and we are looking at other um, metrics like user mode time here and kernel mode time. All right. And that is what that hint is enough for you to see what we are playing around with. All right, friends, hope you have enjoyed this video. Do check out our masterclass recordings. Now the 40 hours content HD videos are available on sqlmaestros.com. You can subscribe to that content and become a lifetime member. Yes, you get a lifetime subscription. Watch the content as many times as you want, wherever, anywhere, uh, and have access to the full content. 40 hours of deep dive on SQL Server performance, tuning, troubleshooting, and query optimization. Everything is available on sqlmaestros.com. All right, friends, see you soon in another video. Do become a member on sqlmaestros.com. Put down a comment if you liked today's content and do share this video with your friends and colleagues. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.